fear is a type of faith. It's believing in the not so good stuff. You know, God lays things out in the Bible like a father to his children. He could explain to us, you know, the quote unquote science behind everything he tells us to do or not to do, but he doesn't. You know, a father doesn't say to a to a child, the boogeyman doesn't exist. He can exist because da 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 da. No, he just says, don't be afraid. You know, daddy's here. And I wonder if, you know, maybe it was more drawn out for some people that they would take some scriptures more seriously. Do not fear is one of them. There's a verse in Job 3, I think it's 25, where he says, what I fear has come upon me. What I dreaded has befalled me. Sometimes God and his chastisement will allow you to experience what you put way too much thought into. You know, you really have to take faith and belief and worship into a grander sense, which is not just to say, well, I believe in Jesus, but I spend all my time, you know, doing something else rather than spending it with him. That's not going to cut it, not for the remnant. No matter what you believe, for better or worse, your faith will bear fruit, again, for better or for worse. We know that the Bible talks about good fruit and bad fruit. The Spirit, you know, one of the fruit of the Spirit is joy. So the anti-fruit of joy would be, you know, like depression and, and misery and things like that. So this is, and it, it makes perfect sense because people who are experiencing these anti-fruits, so to speak, are people that have put their faith in the wrong things. Because it's impossible to put your faith in heavenly things, to look to heavenly things, to think on, specifically the Lord tells us to think on the things above, not because it sounds pretty and he just, you know, wants us to have our head in the clouds, but because there's a manifestation at play. There's always manifestation at play on this earth. And you've got to start thinking like spiritual people. First and foremost, we do these things because the Lord has told us to do them. You know, do not fear. You're commanded. You know, understand that you are commanded. Commands don't just need a number. These are the Ten Commandments. No. And they don't need, you know, God to come down and say, I command thee this. No. If, if God has told us, given us a directive, something in the Bible, that's a command from God. He's protecting us. And he's not always again, going to lay out every detail of why he tells us what to do. I mean, frankly, obedience, he gave me that revelation about a year ago, that obedience keeps us safe. Every single thing he tells us not to do, you know, a lot of people who are younger in faith and it's fine, kind of look at like sin as if it still feels good. Why, you know, why doesn't, why can't I do this type of thing? But it's, as we mature, we realize what's being manifested each time we sin, which is death. If you understood the power of how, you know, God made humans in his image. This is even before salvation. You know, humans have a soul, you know, the mind is powerful and the will. And this is why we require, we're required to submit all that, to lie all that down for God's will. For his will for us, for his will for others, like there's actually a process of submission required because he doesn't want you out here manifesting according to your will. He doesn't want you out here creating without his plan at play. There's an entire new age community which has figured out that it is possible to manifest according to your own will and without God. And yeah, it'll land you in hell in the next life, but that's why so many people live in a lie. And, you know, as far as we've been talking about witchcraft, not witch, but witchcraft. And it is very similar to witchcraft because these things are similar. It's, you know, believing unto your own will. But Christians, many Christians that are less mature are believing unto their own will and, you know, visualizing and trying to bring into manifestation and naming and claiming things that are not God's will for them. And they're running way ahead of the Lord. And this is absolutely disobedience. And I believe for those who don't know better, you know, God will chastise them in one way or another. Some will be allowed to get what they thought they wanted. What you put your faith in is going to bear fruit one way or another. And when you put your faith in, in the continual prayer and your energy towards something that is not God's will for you, of course that's going to bear fruit. And it's going to be rotten fruit one way or another in this life or in the next. Always things can go one way or another. 
you know, if you put your faith in fear, if you put your faith in you're constantly, constantly worrying about what you don't want to happen, you're absolutely going to bring these things upon yourself. Always, always repent for fear and unbelief. You have to know the God that you serve. You know, this isn't just a words we're saying out here. This is an actual faith is actually putting it into practice. And woe to those who don't put faith into practice, who don't put the actual word of God into practice. Faith is not your way. That's witchcraft. That's witchcraft when you're continually just desiring what you want. And I, I wholeheart, I know for a fact that there's a lot of people who continue to pray for what is not God's will for them because that's what they want in their adulterous heart. The wise thing to do is not to want anything at all but to only desire the Lord. And as you do this, he's going to give you his desires in your heart. You know, at least in the beginning, and as you start to mature, as time goes on, you know, God starts maturing you and, and changing your character and your heart. Then you start to have desires that, I mean, let's just be honest. Any good desire isn't yours anyway. It's from God. But then you're having desires that are aligned with his will and you pray into those things. And like we discussed yesterday, you have a knowing of these things that they're going to come to pass because God has given you the faith. He has allotted, allotted you the grace for these specific things. That's part of your plan. You know, a telltale sign that you're praying for and just witchcrafting and trying to manifest something that God doesn't have for you is it's just covered in sorrow and it's depressing. And, and there's so many people that are just like, I've been waiting forever. Why isn't this happening? I'm telling you right now, that thing is not for you because waiting, first of all, don't wait on things. We wait on the Lord. But second of all, these things aren't exhausting. It's not exhausting to wait on the Lord. It's not, you know, uh, miserable to wait on the Lord. Not at all. Because when you're really waiting on the Lord and not what you want, again, he has given you the faith and grace to be able to do that changes everything. And God is very reasonable. You know, he's very reasonable where get to know him and like it says I believe it's in James where he's like you pray for things that don't come to pass because you pay for you pray for for the wrong things and then you pray for the wrong things with the wrong motive in your heart and that all this is connected and it's and it's the Lord trying to tell you you know how much he loves you and and, and what does a loving father want for his children pray into those things pray into God's will specifically the word says that all things that you pray for according to his will come to pass. And I call these the good prayers because they're the guaranteed prayers. You know, for those of you praying for sobriety, praying for deliverance, praying for more faith, praying for, you know, your life to, to not be exalted in a prideful way, but you're praying for, to get to the to the joy, you know, to get to the fruit. You're praying for coming out of that deadness of your former life. Of course, God's going to bring that to pass. You know, be wise, be wise and know that there, of course, God wants those things for you. So pray into those things. You know, when it comes to what I'm talking about, witchcraft is, you know, maybe you don't understand what I'm talking about because you're not out here praying that, you know, God is going to, to just actually, you're going to wake up tomorrow and your bank account is, is full of millions of dollars. There are people praying for these things. There are. And this is why these warnings come out, you know, this not necessarily for everyone. Um, because I'm not here just to talk to the same people over and over. And I'm, I'm, the Lord has often given me words for, you know, the stubborn people, people that are way too close to the fire, giving me words for the stragglers straight up because there's too many people in so-called ministries who continue to minister uh, to people's flesh when, you know, it's dangerous times out here. This is not a time and, and God's not out here damning people who are wish crafting. He's saying, Hey, that's not my will for you. You know, you, you have, you're covered in heaviness. You're covered in, in, in depression and, and worry and fear and doubt because that's not what I have for you. And God loves his people enough that even when they're faltering, you know, to send voices to say, hey, 
what you're doing is actually maybe you don't know what you're doing is wrong but what you're doing is actually wrong because because the lord is like trying to get a lot of people's attention where he's like you know a lot of people are praying and fasting they're offering up this strange fire to him that he didn't ask them for they're trying to continuing to bring their will to pass slapping god's name on it and he's not going to do it and he, and he loves people enough to be like you know i've allowed you to feel this heaviness i'm allowing you you know to to have time to change direction before you end up going by your will into your direction you know a lot of people are being led astray in their hearts by strange voices and the danger there is you can't always tell when you're being led astray in your heart it's not like going down a, a physical path where you know you're going in the wrong direction but that's the power of the flesh when you don't seek the Lord's will for you. And, and you got you got to humble yourself, man. You really got to desire only him. And again, wait. If you would just wait for his will for you. I think a lot of people are just doing this walk themselves because they don't really know, you know, what to do. They're not attached to a church. They have no spiritual authority, mentorship. So they don't realize that when God has a word for you, he's going to give it to you one way or another. When God has a plan for you, he's going to make sure that you know about his plan. You can't miss it. I think a lot of people are worried about about missing God's plan for them so they start making their own plans and the Lord is like whoa so take heed you know use your emotions as a barometer in that not to be guided by them but if you have this real heaviness and you're supposedly waiting on the Lord you know what I mean like if Paul and Silas had the peace of the Lord even in the prison because that's where they were supposed to be at that time then you should be able to have the peace of the Lord no matter how long you've been waiting because God's plans for you what he puts in your heart his way for you I'm telling you right now it comes with his rest it is accompanied by his rest by his presence what you put your faith in bears fruit coming back to Job even after all that suffering you know Job was supposed to be in that suffering at that time and no suffering doesn't feel good but by the end of job what we find is his submission job wasn't constantly praying the storm away you know he was seeking understanding but in order to be people truly of faith you've got to be people after god's own heart first and foremost many people idolizing after relationships and after things that are not for them because of the lack that's in their heart and God wants to fill that and once he feels that you're going to be in his rest and you're going to stop desiring so many external things and then God will bring you the external things that he has for you again finally you don't have to seek after things diligently you have to seek after the Lord diligently and he will bring you the things that he has for you